Hello everyone. I'd like to change my uh, order of operations a little bit today and start with some specific items and then back into the new summary. I wanted to bring up this piece from Business Insider first as an answer to some of the African Americans who have been telling me, you know, why should I care about the war in Ukraine? It's all the way there. It's just some white folks having a squabble. Well, this piece is one of many reasons why you should care. Uh, other reasons I've cited before are the ties and the dependence of African countries on Ukrainian grain. Um, as I mentioned many times, and you can look this up if you don't believe me, Ukraine supplies uh, grain and other products to a lot of nations, I think like over 50 at this point, including African nations. And some of this grain is humanitarian aid, so those nations do not pay for it, despite the fact that some of them chose to ally themselves with Russia. And so, if this war continues, if Ukraine cannot grow grain, which that ability is now impaired by the fact that Russia had destroyed their agricultural land, then people in Africa are going to starve. So there's your reason why you should care about some white folks having a disagreement over there in Eastern Europe. And this is reason number two. So what's this all about? Uh, way back when, in the summer, when we were all talking about the assassination of Wagner chief Prigozhin, um, I talked about the ties between Russia's militant group Wagner and some of the African nations. So basically the group has been engaged in racketeering, especially in the nations known for their gold supply. Okay, they would suppress the population, make deals with local corrupt leaders, overturn elections, stage coups, etc., etc., keeping the population in fear, all for the sake of making deals, you know, for gold and supplies. And so the fact that a new group is being formed now in Africa is definitely going to have an impact on the status of the African nations in the international community because they're basically colluding with a terrorist nation. Uh, this is from the insider. Again, the insider is not my favorite source uh, because they're frequently biased, uh, but you know, they're kind of hit and miss, but lately they've been actually pretty good reporting news in Ukraine. So here we go. Um, Putin issues a serious warning to the West uh, after Kiev shot down three of their bombers. And again, everything you need to know about the war in Ukraine is contained within this one little headline. Because why did Kiev shut down the bombers? Well, because the bombers were there to attack Ukrainian civilians. Why were they there? Because Putin told them to go there. This could all end right away if Russian troops were to turn around and go home. And yet, Putin continues to perpetuate the myth that he's not just invading Ukraine without any provocation. No, 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 no. He keeps telling everybody he's there fighting NATO, fighting U.S., blah, 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 blah. All of that with a, a very unhealthy dose of religious fanaticism. Now, let's go to the summary by The Guardian. This is... Continuing story, as I mentioned before, so right now uh, there is an outbreak of what is known as mouse fever, and we talked about it several days ago about what sort of disease it is, uh, what are the symptoms, how it gets about, etc., etc. And interestingly, this is also kind of one of the consequences of the global climate change. So why are we having this enormous infestation? So why are we having this infestation? Because of the global climate change. We are having an unusually warm winter. And because we are at war, there's plenty of corpses, destroyed food supplies, etc., etc. So the rodents, mice and rats, have a lot of food. And so they're just running free. And while... It appears to be that Ukrainian army is taking some precautions. 
Russian army is not, and so Mao's fever is just mowing them down. This uh, next bit is amusing. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, there's now evidence that uh, the assassination of uh, Wagner chief Prigozhin uh, was supported by an ally of Vladimir Putin. Really? It took you that long to figure that out? Come on, guys. Really? <laughs> Seriously, let's let's get serious, people. That was kind of obvious. And then there is this, the last but not the least, you know, as Russia's elections approach, we already know Putin is on the ballot. But this is interesting. It is unlikely that Ekaterina Dunsova, a former TV journalist, had any serious chances of winning against Putin. Nevertheless, they made sure that she can't. Uh, they basically disqualified her from putting her name on the ballot, citing the incorrectly filled in paperwork. I have no doubt that that's bullshit, but this shows you just how insecure Putin is about his position. He knows he's going to win, but even so, he will not have any competition. He will not have any other name on his on the ballot other than his own. And so these kinds of underhanded methods are used to disqualify his competition. <laughs>